DMC Productions presents Mercenary Metal Radio. Freedom for all. Death to the tyrants. Foreign policy. Mercenary Metal Radio for July the 8th, which is a Wednesday. So this week we are going to tackle some of your responses along with some inflammatory topics. Uh, I'm going to piss a bunch of people off. I'm really excited for this. I'm outstandingly excited about all the comments I'm going to get. This is going to be awesome. Racism. Oh yeah. We're going to talk about that. But first... From a gentleman named Rudy Vargas, who is a guy in the music industry. I'm, I'm not sure who he produces for, um, but he works with bands. And so his this is his advice for you, the band guy, the manager, the person in the music industry. I think one thing that many bands local seem to miss or overlook is the emphasis on the network business aspect. With this day and age, social media is the prime, almost mandatory method for getting exposure for anything someone is trying to start. One of my very close friends runs his own business and continues to grow from marketing. From a marketing aspect, he told me that in his studies, he has found that a very important tip for starting businesses in this day and age. Your network is your net worth. The rising band is essentially like starting a business, and when it comes down to it, not many people really know the kind of effort it's going to take. And this is just one aspect of running a band. We aren't talking a few shares here and there saying, hey, like our page, but researching other pages and venues and waiting for a show to come up and contacting people personally. Posting a band pic on every page you know to remind people, hey, we are still here. Of course, there's promoting shows and all that usual stuff, but it's extra above and beyond that's going to make the difference. Many locals expect things to be handed to them, in a sense, especially in a generation that has a bigger attitude of self-entitlement than ever before. It's that extra mile of networking that shows promoters how bad you really want it. And really, it comes down to the question, how bad do you really want it? And you never know who you may end up talking to because when the time comes for the opportunity of a lifetime what kind of local band do you think promoters looking to give a chance for the big leagues are going to want to book you have to truly set yourselves apart from everyone everyone else not just musically but in networking and promotion yes it takes time you need to build this portfolio almost 
so many promoters that bring in big shows know you know you on a first name basis when starting out as a local ready to make the next big step it's not just going to be how good your music is but how good your work ethic is your personable how personable you are when you're doing business and believe me promoters that have their shit together are watching how you operate both in person and on social media that's assuming you get to the point where you have their attention when you have them coming to you for the next big opportunity because they know you can handle it. They know how bad that you want it. That's from Rudy Vargas. Um, Definitely check him out on Facebook. Um, I think he directly promotes bands and um, has a couple different projects that he's doing. I've I've connected too many people at this point, so sometimes I really don't know who, who all the different people are. Um, but yeah, that's some, that's some music industry advice. I really think it's, it, it makes a big difference because when you, when you're a local band and you're looking to do stuff, it's very difficult to separate out. Is this a joy and a passion or is this a job? And it should be both. You should be trying to gain value from the music that you're doing, but also have balance within the fact that it's a passion. So, if that means that instead of putting out a commercially produced sugar pop uh, type of album and putting out a jam album where barely any of your music is rehearsed but you love it, are you going to get more people on which demographic? So there's a guy, um, he's a comedian on, on YouTube. I think his name is Jared. I forget. He has he I think he made the the MySpace movie and he made the Facebook uh movie as well on YouTube if you want to check that out. He has this alter Korean K-pop uh like persona and he goes as I think it's Chad Universe or something ridiculous. I'm going to post this, but it's hilarious. And You can tell that he's making fun of the music industry, but he's doing something that he loves. And he's actually making real songs with big Korean pop star artists. And it is satire, but it's real. So it's kind of the both extremes. Do you want to put out a jam album where none of it's pitch corrected, none of your music has any sort of effects on it, and it's just you jamming and you have an awesome sound, or do you want to put out an album that is going to take you into the stratosphere of pop and have it nice and perfect and cute and whatever? It kind of depends on what you want, but your work ethic has to be there to where you're constantly contacting people, you're talking to different fellow artists, and you're exchanging information with that person. Because if you don't do that, if you're at a show and you play with somebody, well, you might not be friends with them, but why not play another show with them? I mean, it, it depends on what your your goal is, and I think Rudy is correct. So on Drunk Ex Pastors podcast episode 38, the Police Brutality, I think it's really interesting how um, Jason and Christian were going back and forth between the different um, killings that have been going on in the United States. Um, Putting in perspective, the population is 338,000 people in America, or 338 million people, I'm sorry. I don't know the the demographics of how many white, blacks, Latinos, Asians, and uh, Jab Orientals are <laughs> are in, uh, in America, but you have to put that in perspective, okay? Now... In the episode, I find it really interesting they're kind of going back and forth on different bad aspects of police brutality and the fact that um, essentially, de facto, we have Judge Dredd type um, policing that's going on in America where, you know, if you pull somebody over, um, it doesn't matter who's in a car, you're obviously going to be on your guard. But if the person's black and a hoopty and some sort of, you know, uh, Buick Cutlass uh, with big giant rims, black tinted windows, and you know, is listening to Dr. Dre. 
you're definitely going to be more counter to that person with the way that you're acting towards them. On the episode of Drunk Guys Pastors, you know, they, they identify the fact that in America we have um, a type of policing that is reactionary, that shows up to crimes that doesn't solve them. The inherent bias we all have if a cop pulls you over for some sort of speeding infraction or any, any traffic infraction at all. Um, countering that idea in a liberty perspective, any sort of authoritarian practice is against human rights and your ability to contract. So I have my own company. We do security. You can contact me and I could get some guys and they would protect you. And in a free society, this is what would happen. Right now, so I live in Virginia. The Washington, D.C. police, the Alexandria police, Fairfax, L.A. County in, in California, these are standing armies. These are not police forces. A police force is a group of people that are in a town, elect an official or hire police and then they start them, and they, they can hire and fire them at will. Um, and they have all agreed to it. Right now, we live in a society in which L.A. County has over 4,000 guys, I think, was the last I heard. And um, Fairfax County has over 3,000 people, which is where all the politicians live um, in, in Virginia. These are not of and by the people... Anything like that. Oakland. Um, I mean, any places like these. Th- these police forces have been going on for literally hundreds of years. And never have been stopped. And who voted for them? And who agrees that they should be there? Well, offhand, it shouldn't even be a question. Racism is caused by people who are discriminating against people based on their skin color, race, gender, however you want to define racism. And who is enforcing it? The police. Where do the police come from? Well, a bunch of white people 300 years ago, or 200 years ago, or whatever, decided that they should be in power. Now, what most people don't understand is that if they've never had a police job before, you've never done security, or you've never done any sort of work like this before, the way hiring practices work for most um, police departments is that you have mo- like 30% of the police force has to live in the county that they work in, whereas the rest of it, they don't have to. They can live wherever they want. And in most places in America, um, they don't even have that requirement at all. So say if it's a, if it's a larger town, they can't possibly do that because they need as many people as they possibly can. So, I don't know the right terms for this, but essentially you have rich white people or moderately wealthy white people. They have their degree. They go to the police academy. They get a job. They live outside of the town or outside of the city that they patrol, and they live in their gated communities, specifically in L.A. County or LAPD, um, 100%. None of those officers actually live anywhere near the places they patrol. Um, they all live in these gated communities and actual police gated communities that they all live in together. Um, separating out the fact that these police do not live, they're not part of that society. They don't, they're not part of that community. It is an occupying force. It's just as America and Afghanistan being there and why if you're a black guy and you live in Oakland or you live in Compton, why would you be okay with some white guy who doesn't live near you, doesn't have any family members that are connected to you, is patrolling your neighborhood and putting you at gunpoint? So is it just to shoot that guy? Not necessarily. Is it just to overthrow that police department? Absolutely. And the reason why is because they're not of and for the people. So if, I mean, if you're one of these 
persons who believes in the state, whether you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, and some libertarians who say that um, this Constitution paper is, you know, written by God himself and inspired, um, well then, use it. I mean, if that's what you believe, then utilize that piece of paper and eliminate all public policing. But the horror, and who will build the roads, and we'll... We'll throw down all the other all the other antics from people who want to support the state, but you do not need public police forces for protection. Number one in Katrina, it, this is you know modern day. This isn't back in the day of you know horse riding and and you know playing you know Confederates and Indians. Uh, in modern day times, we had people in Katrina who were from that neighborhood who amassed weapons and they stood guard and they protected their communities. Just as the people of Switzerland, now they have deployed to Afghanistan, so they lost a little bit of their street cred. But even in Switzerland, people from the cantons protect the places of the cantons. So... In America right now, we need to eliminate the public police. This would eliminate 99.9% of all racism and all black deaths from the hands of white people in their neighborhoods. Well, why? Because the white cops wouldn't be patrolling their neighborhood. But, well, wouldn't the black people all be shooting and killing each other and raping everybody? Well, then they would have their own protection of police forces and people would separate and they would not associate with violent people. And then you would have societies which would then integrate and then grow more fully together and not be divided. The only purpose in having public police is to divide people, in my opinion. Because it, it essentially drives a wedge between poor white people and poor black people. And basically allows the perception that all white people are bad and all white people want to shoot black people. But that's ridiculous. It's the government that is supporting this institution. And the way to end that institution is to end the public police. And then black, you know, kids won't get shot by white people. And if they do, then they can go to jail. But it won't be like the shootings that are going on today where you have a rich white Got, he gets paid sixty-five dollars to $70,000 a year to, to do police work. Um, you won't have that person shooting and killing people. And this is where I also you know, go to the point of, of uh, uh, Daniel Tosh's joke. Do you know what this is about? This is about the troops. My comedy is about the fucking troops. And you know what? We need to bring them back and carry the war on here. <laughs> so... I like Daniel Tosh's idea and that we really do need to bring the war back to America, okay? The opposite. And uh, my idea is to end the standing army, you bring back all military troops, and you essentially say, we give you 30 days to you know, go back to the place that you, you live or the place that you want to live, and they're going to start up neighborhood protection forces. And somehow they're going to find a way to get people to get paid. And so we can take all of the money that we're giving to the Afghanis, all the money that we're giving to the pa Pakistanis, Azerbaijans, the Turkish people, the Qataris, all of the bases in, in Kuwait, um, all of the bases in Dubai. Just keep naming them off. And instead of spending all that money over there, we could spend that money in the United States and then have public protection forces which actually protect their towns and communities. So instead of freeing the oppressed in other countries, we can free the oppressed here in America. The ranger's job of the 75th Ranger Regiment should not be in the Middle East and around the world. Their job should be in the United States, fucking up bad guys. So if there's somebody like the Boston Bombers, those people should have been killed. And in my, my opinion... If the military would have been back in the United States and those those people who are inherent to that community would have saw the value in their protection, those guys probably would not have been successful in killing other people. Um, 
It's inflammatory. It doesn't go along the lines of the Republicans and the Democrats. But you know what? Fuck the two-party system because it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't support us and it doesn't assist in the actual protection of a neighborhood. And we would see the value in our neighbors if we didn't have random people patrolling our towns, that we had real people that we know. Maybe it's Bob, the the 75-year-old, uh, you know, Vietnam vet. Maybe it's Bertha, the, uh, the soccer mom, who takes one class for my buddy on gun safety. She carries a gun every night from 12 to 6 and walks the neighborhood. Do we have to have professional police? Absolutely not. I hope you guys enjoyed the band that I played. Um, That band is from France. I will put the information in the show notes. You guys can check them out. Hopefully with those guys, we get some more European bands that I can play for you guys. American bands are cool and all, but we should support our European brothers and sisters. Um, There's some really, really, really good bands from France and from Switzerland. And especially all the Norwegian death metal bands and Swedish metal bands. Um, So hopefully we get some more of those. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Please check out the other podcast that I have, which is Sex Positive Podcast. You can check that out on Stitcher, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Um, It is a love, sex, dating, kinky stuff um, podcast that we have. We have special guests and um, kind of feature ideas on dating and relationships. So I hope you guys enjoy that. To all my buddies who are back in the United States for their vacations and leave from the military and uh, contractorists, please enjoy some awesome single malt scotch whiskey. And I'm going to go have me some coffee. This has been Mercenary Metal Radio. Thank you for checking out this new podcast. And please enjoy us every single week. Thank you. Just a last time Not the one of days Just a last time No one, no the way of my shoulders Stop!